Hi, and welcome to the digital job site, where the lumber's straight, the weather's great, and there really is a board stretcher. In this tutorial, I'm going to show how to model this professional carpenter's footstool. This stool's modeled after one that I currently use on the job all the time. I built one just like this with these dimensions 20 years ago, and it's served me well all the time since. And while the stool I have is still sturdy, it's gotten kind of beat up over the years, so I thought it's time to upgrade. And as long as I'm going to the trouble of upgrading, I decided to make it in two species of wood. And I plan on using ash that's nice and hard for the top and mahogany that's pretty but lightweight and sturdy for the legs, which is the way I show it in this SketchUp model. So what we'll do in this tutorial is begin with the steps for planning and designing the step stool, build out this model in SketchUp where I'll upload it to the component warehouse for download. And then I'll pick up the project in the shop and do a next level carpentry tutorial to show how the stool is actually built. So I'll stop the animation and talk a little bit about the design of this step stool. There's any number of footstool concepts and designs, but what I've learned over the years is that to have a functional stool, it needs to have some principal features. As I said, I built a stool with this exact same design 21 years ago. It's been with me on just about every trim job since. So I feel pretty strongly about the features this stool has. To begin with, I have an overall height dimension of 14 and a half inches. The top is 10 inches by 24 inches. That makes it handy for carrying around on the job site. It's big enough to walk around on top of, sit on, etc. But it's not so big that it's awkward to use. The primary feature of a good footstool is that the footprint is larger than the dimensions of the top. So if we just draw a rectangle on this top surface and then stretch that rectangle down to the ground, you can see that the legs of the stool stick out beyond the end of the top. I've got it set at about three quarters of an inch. And the width of the legs where they sit on the floor are wider than the width of the top. And having the footprint larger than the size of the top is what gives the stool stability. There's other stools where the legs go straight up and down and are spaced in an inch or so from the end. And what happens with that sort of stool design is that if you ever step on the end of the stool with one foot, it'll flip over in an instant and you end up getting hurt. Don't ask me how I know that. So when we're modeling the stool, we'll go through steps to work out the angle of the legs so that the footprint is larger than the size of the top. The tapers and the angles that are built in here are all functional but they've been embellished a little bit to enhance the design, at least in my opinion. Other features of the stool design are the tray underneath, which obviously is handy for carrying tools around, and the rails on the side of the tray are sturdy as well. Sometimes I end up standing on those rails, which works really well. I've got a rounded slot in the top for picking up and carrying the stool. It works sometimes for uh, clearance for a drill bit. When I drill through a piece of wood, the bit can go through that hole and not damage the top. The top has crisp, sharp edges, which sometimes end up bending pieces of sheet metal on them or other things. The legs, looking close, are beveled on the sides. The bevel on this model is a little too big on this side. We'll change that when we redo the model. This round hole in the end is a strain relief to keep the wood from splitting in the middle. And a feature that I really like to point out to potential customers is that this stool's built with no screws or nails. It's all wedged tenons. If we select this top piece and use the move tool, we can just raise it up 10 inches and then zoom in. You can see how the wedged tenons are modeled. And you can see that the legs are set up the same way. If we slide this over and explode the model, can see how the tendons are wedged here, going through mortises in the legs. And once this thing is glued together and those wedges driven in, it would never pull apart like this. The tray just fits in between the rails in a dadoed slot. When the stool project goes to the shop, the various corners will get rounded off slightly. I don't do that in the SketchUp model because it just adds a whole bunch of polygons to the model and slows it down and there's no real benefit of doing it. 
So with that overview complete, we'll move on to creating this professional carpenter's footstool model. So I'm just going to go File, New. We'll save changes to this, but start all over with a new model. And I'm using SketchUp Make 2016 for this tutorial. And I'm going to show this default tray over here. And let's get started with a model. The first step is going to be to draw the top. And as I explained, I made that top 24 inches long by 10 inches wide which is what we have with that rectangle, and it's 3 quarters of an inch thick, so we'll just draw this up 0.75, and that gives us a top. And by triple clicking, right clicking, we can make this a group. And we want the stool to be 14 and a half inches tall. It's 3 quarters of an inch thick, so I'm just going to use the Move tool, and we'll raise it up 1 3.75 inches. And I'm going to go ahead and check that to make sure I did my math right just like me to build a whole model and have it wrong. Okay, so that's good. So we have the top of the stool sitting the right distance off the ground. There's just going to be one top, so I'm going to leave that as a group. When we make the legs, we'll make a special component for them. And there's no sense in reinventing the board. It's like reinventing the wheel, only a little different. So we're just going to take one of these and then rotate, hit Control, and copy it. Stand that up. And let's just move it down until it's sitting on the ground. And I know from the stool I'm currently using that a leg angle of 10 degrees will give us about 3 quarters of an inch of protrusion of the leg beyond the end of the stool. So I've just tilted that at 10 degrees. I'm going to slide this out. And then I'll take the Move tool and slide this in. And a dimension of about 1 space 11 slash 1 6 will give us our 3 quarters of an inch protrusion beyond the end of the stool. If it's any more than that, uh, it tends to be something you trip on. If it's any less of a protrusion, it, the stool is a bit unstable. And because we want the leg to be wider than the stool as well, I'm going to go out here three-fourths of an inch with the edge of the leg and then double click on this side so that the legs are now three-quarters of an inch wider and three-quarter inch longer than the top of the stool. So the modeling process is a little bit different than the actual building process, which you'll see here shortly. And to model efficiently, I'm going to go into this group and split the leg exactly in half by moving a copy of this face to the middle. It'll click on the midpoint. And then we're just going to delete half of that leg. Then I'm going to take this group and explode it and then right click and make it a component and we're going to call it a leg quadrant. So that we can make these legs with a minimum amount of modeling effort. So there's our leg quadrant. And to get a complete leg I'm going to take this leg component and move it and copy it next to itself. Just going to slide this over we have two halves and then take the scale tool hold on this middle button and by holding control you can see how this is just making a reverse of itself and as long as we get a minus one in the corner down below we'll end up with the leg we need so two of these leg quadrants are going to make up each leg so I'm going to move and copy these guys down so we have a pair on the other end of the stool I'm just going to move them over here an arbitrary amount but stay in the red direction while they're still selected, I'm going to scale them by grabbing the middle button and tilting them back to make a negative of themselves. And I didn't hold control that time because it didn't matter. And I'm going to throw a guideline in here so we have something to follow. When we use the Move tool, I'm going to just click on this intersection here and just slide it over till it hits the stool on that corner. And like on the other side, I want to go another inch and 11 sixteenths, one space, one one slash, one six, enter. And that puts the legs on this end in the same location as the legs on the first end that we started off with. Get rid of this guideline, and now I'll show you what that whole process did. When we open up one leg quadrant and do anything to it, it happens to all four at the same time in the same orientation. So if I make the leg narrower, 
on this one you can see how they all shrink I use the back arrow and whatever whatever gets done with one of these legs happens to all of them at the same time so we only have to model one half of one leg to get the whole job done so now that we've got the model set up and oriented in this way we can start work on these legs so we'll enter into one of these components and do a little work with the tape measure tool I'm going to give this a one inch overhang around the edge which is a nice, another nice feature of this stool design the top has a an exposed lip all the way around the edges which makes it nice for moving carrying and clamping things to the sides so we'll take the protractor tool to set the taper on the edge of these legs we've got a nine degree taper on the side which is good we'll just trace out that taper with the pencil tool zooming in until we see a red x for that intersection and just go up here to the top of this board and we can just push pull that part of the leg off with no trouble at all we go up in here to edit and delete the guides to clean up the model and then we're going to add the strain relief cut to the middle of the legs by going 3.75 inches in and then the cut I used on those is 40 degrees we want to get the protractor tool to index on this face go vertical and then tilt in 40 degrees which will then give us a center point for a inch and an eighth hole so we'll grab the circle tool and draw nine sixteenths radius hole on this leg component and to simplify things I'm just going to take one of these leg quadrants and move it out here so that we can do this function of drilling the hole and cutting the angle so we'll delete that take the push pull and drill the hole through to the other side then we can draw a line on here looking for these X's making sure that we're on the intersection points and then oops go the wrong way there we just notch those out so you can see with that process we were able to make those cuts without having complicated geometry with the two overlapping leg quadrants so we're going to delete all the guides from that operation to clean up the model again and you can see how this is progressing next we'll put this little 40 degree notch on the edge of this leg and what this does in the real world is keeps it from having crisp square corners that splinter off with these little bevels and angles on here the stool can be dragged around a rough floor and not get all splintered up so we'll go into one of these leg quadrant components we're going to take this 40 degree surface and move and copy one of those it's out here in space and you can see all four legs are getting the same treatment then we're going to scale it by holding this middle handle to make it a negative one and while it's selected I'm going to right click and make it a group so that it can move it over to the edge of this board and then let's go in a half an inch 0.5 enter so that the footprint of the stool will still be wider than the top by just a little bit all right so now we'll explode that component and select everything in here let's go drag this way so we get more of it right click intersect faces with selection and then delete away what we don't want there's other ways of notching this corner but this is pretty quick and easy for what we're doing here Oops, missed that little face delete him out you can see how we got the notches taken care of there and I did it in this order I put all these notches in the hole in there before trimming these legs to fit flat on the floor which is the step we'll do next it's just easier to do it in this sequence so let's go back in this leg quadrant and draw ourselves a rectangle for cutting so let's go into this leg quadrant and draw a rectangle and I'll double click this rectangle and make it a group so we can move it where we need to for trimming this leg without it complicating things this model's gotten a little jumpy but I want this leg plane to intersect the leg right at the outside face there you can see what's going on how this plane represents the surface that the stool would sit on and with all this overlapping geometry it's getting a little confusing so I'm just going to take one leg quadrant move it and copy it over here 
to simplify everything. Now let's go into this component and select everything. Right click, intersect faces with selection. And I made a mistake there. And what needs to happen is I need to now explode this group first before we intersect the faces. I'll leave that little screw up there in the tutorial so that when you run into a situation like that, you'll realize what happened. So now I want to go through the intersect faces again with selection. I delete the face first, then the boundary, the double click. And then we'll zoom in with the eraser tool and do the actual trimming of these legs by zipping out these little lines. And you can see that we've accomplished that on all the legs at the same time. So we can delete this extra quadrant over here, which gives you a pretty good idea of the model taking shape. The next step we'll do is to trim the top of the legs to fit the underside of the top of the stool. And I'm going to get lazy here and go into the top group. Double click the bottom surface and go control C. And then we'll go back into our leg quadrant, paste in place. So we have a component with that cutting plane hooked up to it. So I'm going to grab one quadrant, move and control, put it out here where we can work on it. And this geometry is it's all free geometry within the component, which you can see there. So we'll just select everything in the component. Right click, intersect faces with selection, delete the plane. Delete the boundary and delete the top of the board. So they're all trimmed off. One thing I'm just going to reverse this face while I'm in here for proper model orientation. Delete that and you can see how our stool is shaping up nicely. The next step we'll take in building this footstool model is to add the wedge tenons that hold the top to the legs. I turned the shadows on there just to give it a little effect, but I'll shut that off. And I'll start the process to model those tenons with a couple guidelines. We're going to go into a leg quadrant group, take the tape measure tool here and just lay a line in here at 1.25 inches so that that guideline is inside the group that we need it to be in. Now we'll move this top straight up in the blue direction 10 inches so we can easily put it back later. The reason I put that guideline in there using the edge of the top is because of the compound angle effect we get on the edge of this leg. If I pull a parallel line off the edge of the top, you can see it doesn't line up on the edge of the stool leg there. And we needed the line to be parallel to the edge of the stool's top. So we'll back up that to get out of there and pivot around. And we're going to make a tenon on here that is 5 eighths by 1 inch. So we'll type in 5 slash 8 comma 1 to get a a tenon that lays out. And I'm going to pull these tenons up three quarters of an inch so they fully extend through the top. And with that configuration, I just need to make sure that this top corner of the tenon is included in the piece of wood from this leg. Let's see if I can do that with a guideline here by holding shift and then clicking straight out. And then once on this face, you can see by that line that the corner of this tenon will indeed be included in the volume of this board. I hope that makes sense. Take that line out of there. And to make a wedge tenon work, I'm going to drill a hole through these tenons. Somehow in my process there, I got this tenon to be outside of the leg quadrant component. So we'll just go ahead and work on the tenon, and then we'll put it into that component. You'll see how that process works. So for this wedge tenon to work, we'll drill a relief hole in it. So I'm just going to stretch this circle out to 1 slash 8 make a quarter inch hole, click on that circle, and then right click. And I've got this fine center plugin installed on the computer or on my software. If you don't have that, it's a great plugin to have. I'm going to take those items there and make them a group so we can slide them around. I'm just going to move this circle to the center of the tenon. Then I'm going to slide it up 3 sixteenths of an inch and then explode it. So we have that geometry put in the face there. And to make this tenon work, Draw a couple guidelines, a quarter of an inch in on either side, and then take the protractor tool down here where the guideline meets the circle. Click up here, and then let's just tilt these out two degrees and do the same for both of them. And I'm zooming way in to get the exact intersection point there. So we have this wedge spot here that's got a two degree taper to it. Now let's just trace over those guidelines looking for the red intersection X's as I go so that everything lands where we want it. 
I'll go up in here and edit and delete these guides, delete this section of the arc, and then we'll shove this little spot out. And that's what we want our wedge tenons to look like. And you can see it only happened on one of these leg quadrants because we built that little tenon lug outside of the component. So what I'm going to do is triple click on this, go control C and then delete it, then go inside the component group and go edit paste in place. And that nicely puts our little tenon on top of the component. One thing I'm going to have to do here is to go in and delete this surface inside and I'll just retrace this line to build that surface back up. So now each leg quadrant has a tenon on there and we want to have a half tenon on the middle of each side of this leg. So I'm just going to grab this geometry here, move, control, carefully grab it by the center point and slide it over. And then I'm going to just take this tool, push-pull tool, and move it to the center. And you can see now that there's a half a tenon on each side of each half of the leg which will leave us one full tenon in the middle. So I hope that process makes sense. Now let's just drop this top back down here 10 inches. We can see exactly where we want these tenon holes. We've gone into the top group and I'm going to draw some rectangles. And I didn't go through the trouble of making the top of the stool a four segmented component because we don't really have to do too much of this work. And then we can move and control that to get those three Mortise is set up, then I'm going to copy and move these three to the other end. And then I'm just going to go through and push these mortises out. And once we've done the process once, I can just double click and it'll punch them all through. Oops, I lost the memory of that move, so we'll just start it again, we're clicking each one of these. And now when we raise this top up again, you can see that all those mortises are nicely punched through and that they drop down right on top of the wedged tenons on the legs. Next we'll model the tray and rails that go underneath the stool. And that tray is 8 inches wide and it's 4 inches off the ground, an inch and a half thick. So I'm just going to make this 30 comma 8. Enter and then pull this up an inch and a half. And we'll triple click this and make it a group so we can move it around. Grab it there, the midpoint on the top and put it on the midpoint here. And we'll grab the midpoint of the side and shift it down till it's the midpoint of the stool. And we'll drag it straight down and put it on the ground. And we'll, now we'll just move it straight up four inches. That puts the tray right where we want it. So we did a whole lot of marking and measuring there just by moving this block around, indexing to center marks rather than drawing a whole bunch of guidelines. So I clicked inside the group and I'm going to double click on one side of it and go control C. I'm going to take this and just slide it. Let's just go up 20 inches and then edit paste in place and it'll paste one of our side pieces on here. I'm going to right click this, make it a component and I'm going to call this a tray rail and create that. We'll go into that component and draw a couple lines. Just going to trace out the inside corner of this. Same thing on the other side. And because there's not a whole lot of modeling work to do on these, I'm not going to make a, a half of a rail and model it up like we did the legs. We'll just make one rail and edit the ends. I want those to be three quarters of an inch thick, so we'll drag this over 0.75, which is where we want it. And we'll move and copy this over, 7.25, enter. And that will give us our 8 inch width, which we can see by moving this back down 20 inches. It all fits together. And we don't need that box anymore, so we'll just delete it. We need to reverse one of these components, so I've selected that. I'm just going to scale it through itself by holding Control and going minus 1. So that when we put a dado in here for the plywood in the tray, It'll be on the inside on both. And because this is a component, I can just move a copy of it out here to work on it and open this up. And I'm going to take this line and move a copy of it up a quarter of an inch. Enter, 2x, enter. So that gives us two lines here. And let's get rid of these little snippets on the end here on each end. And I'm just doing this instead of using guidelines. Let's just push this in a quarter of an inch. And that will work nicely to hold a piece of plywood in the bottom, which is our goal. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to take these two rails, I'm going to shift, move, 
Just going to move these out here 20 inches so that we can see what's going on. Take the rectangle tool from this corner through and over to this corner and get that rectangle to behave. Now I'm going to double click that, make it a group, get into that group and stretch it up quarter inch thick to represent the bottom of our tray. Take this line with the move tool and move it straight in to bevel the end of the tray. But we'll pivot to the other end and move this end in. And I did that again without making a tray with two halves. I just chose to work on each end individually rather than splitting it in half with a component to get it done a different way. Let's take all these three things, make them a group, and we can just slide this tray back over in the green direction 20 inches, which puts it right where it belongs underneath the stool four inches off the ground. Next, we'll put the tenons on the end of these rails. I'm going to double click into the group. Control C to select a rail, get out of the group, edit, paste in place, and then we'll just move one of these out here. Doesn't matter where because it's a component. And we'll put a tenon on the end. But let's go into a leg. Let me just move and control one of these legs out of here. Go into that component and select the geometry that makes up the wedge tenon with Control C. Then we'll go into this component and control V to place a little tenon in here. I need to make this thing a group so that we can stick it on here without having a bunch of drama. So we'll make this a group. If we grab it by the middle here and slide it up and click it to the middle there, get a middle to middle joint. Now let's just, just rotate this thing around 90 degrees this way. And then match it up to our angle that way. And that would be a difficult tenon to cut. So let's move it to where it can actually be cut. And I'm putting two guidelines in here so that we can slide it with the move tool right down to where we want it. Like that. And you can see there's a conflict here with the tenon and the dado. When this project goes to the shop, this dado will have to end before it gets to that tenon. But for modeling purposes, we'll just leave it like that. I'm just going to move this guideline down until it hits this corner of this tenon. So this geometry is still grouped, and we have guidelines, so I'm going to move a copy of it down to the other end of this tray rail, holding it on that guideline. We'll scale that to minus 1. I think if we rotate it 20 degrees, and then line up this corner with the guideline, we have a matching tenon on this end, so I'm going to explode this tenon and do the same on the other end. Delete the guides, and then we can look on the legs and see that the tenons we put on this component out here are showing up on this leg quadrant. So if we go into the leg quadrant and draw a rectangle around that, push this through to the other side, so you can see how those tenons all fit through mortises in the leg ends and in the stool top. The next bit of digital carpentry that we'll tackle is to cut the hand hole in the top. So I'm going to enter into the top group, and I've found that a hole that's an inch and an eighth wide and a total of about four inches long is a comfortable fit for my hand. So let's make a rectangle that's three comma one space one slash eight in size and draw a half circle on either end of it. And looking at the value control box, I can see when 9 16 comes up, it'll give us a half circle, especially with that little notation. And we can delete these lines out of here and make this a group. Grab it by the center and index that center with the center of the stool. Let's see if we can grab the center of this end, which is right there. And then we'll slide it over in the green direction until it centers up on the stool. So that way we have a hole and we centered it up on the top. I'll explode this little group and then we'll grab the push-pull tool to drill that out. These lines on the inside I don't want them to show up so I'm taking the eraser tool and holding control which softens those lines. 
and that finishes up the general carpentry of the stool. And before we move on to other things, we'll put a five degree bevel on the edge of this top. So let's go into the group edit mode, take our protractor and draw a guideline here, five degrees. Take the pencil tool, trace that line like that. And select the four edges of this top. One, two, three, four. Follow me and then run this little bevel around there. So we've got a little bevel on the edge of the top. Get rid of this guideline. And that takes care of that. The last bit of modeling here we'll do is to make a little wedge to put in these wedge tenons. I'm just going to model it right on top of this leg component by tracing things out here. So I'm just going to trace there. Let's see if we can get these lines to extend down. There we go. Let's extend them down 3 sixteenths. That little magenta line tells me that I'm running in line with that side. Delete this. Make this a component. We'll call it tenon wedge. Create one of those. Edit the component by making it the width of this tenon. You notice it's not happening anywhere else because I've modeled this little wedge on top of the geometry. So I'm going to select that component with the control C and then delete it. And then we'll go into component edit mode and go edit paste in place. And you can see it threw a tenon into all those locations. So we're going to move and copy this to the middle. And then I'm going to right click this and make it unique and edit that unique wedge so that it's only a half. And that fills out all those. Go back in and copy one of these with the control C. And we'll go to our little rail here and control V to paste one of those wedges here and then we can manipulate it around again and move it into place on this little tenon. Rotate it in the blue direction 90 degrees and then rotate it in this direction. What do we got to go? 80 degrees to get that to line up. I'm going to move and copy that to the other end. This is one of those things that could have saved some of this trouble by modeling this rail as two halves of a component, but I decided a while back that that wasn't going to be worth it. So we're just switching that around. I'm going to go 20 degrees that way and then move it in the position. And it looks like I did everything right. So we now have wedge tenons everywhere we need them. We can delete these two working components. And that finishes up the digital carpentry for the stool so that we can proceed with putting the material textures on this to spiff up the model a little bit, which is what we'll do next. We'll start the material texturing of this model with the simple part. It's just going to be the top. So I'll just draw a rectangle here on the ground and reverse the faces. Go up to our materials tab. And I don't really like the texture that I have for ash. So I'm just taking this red oak, applying that texture. I'm right clicking to get the texture tab position. And I'm right clicking again to rotate this 90 degrees. Go back to the texture tab and call this up projected texture. Now I'll take this whole rectangle, rotate tool, put it on this corner and slide it in that direction. Let's just rotate this up 30 degrees. Enter. And then we'll go into the component or the group for the top. Then we'll sample this projected texture. When we slap that on the top it gives it the look of end grain on there quite nicely which is a feature I always like to do. So we're done with this rectangle. Let's draw another one. Same process, reverse the faces. And let's take this African mahogany. And your texture selection will likely be different than mine, but just go in there and root around until you find a wood texture that you like. And I'm going to take this texture, right click, 
and then make it a projected texture. Double click this and rotate a copy of it. It's going to go 90 degrees. And then we'll take this and rotate a copy of it. Be up 60 degrees. So now we have a projected texture for that. And then we'll go into one of these rail components and sample this projected texture, which quickly paints it up and puts the end grain on there pretty nicely. So to put a texture on our leg quadrant component, so we'll take this projected texture rectangle and rotate a copy of it 80 degrees, which lines it up with the angle of the leg. So if we go into a component here and, and triple click and sample the texture on this rotated panel, it should throw the texture in that leg just like we want it. You can see the end grain texture there and everything. And I like that a lot. There might be a simpler way to propagate these projected textures, but that system of putting a texture on a panel, projecting it, and then rotating that around till it orients right with the location of the wood always works nicely. And anybody that's watching close is probably going to wonder how I put up with this line going down the middle of the model leg, and uh, the answer is that I don't. So I've gone into a component there, and I'm going to select all this geometry on the end by lining up that component. You can see I've selected that whole joining end. Now I'm just going to right click it and say hide. Presto, it's gone. And it looks like the last thing we need to texture is going to be tenon wedges. So we'll just drill down in here and get one of these guys. Control C and copy it. Click back out, edit, paste in place. And then we'll move that little guy out here so we can work on it easily. And I like to use a contrasting wood for those wedges so they show up nicely. So we're going to draw one more rectangle and go in and grab something exotic. Here's Bubinga. That'll be a good texture for this little wedge. You're going to go position, rotate 90 degrees, and then take this rectangle, make the texture projected, rotate it 60 degrees. Go into our little pen and wedge, and you can see we've selected every one in the model. I grab that texture and paint it on these guys. Get a nice little projected texture on all of those. You can see I missed the little unique tenon wedges in the middle of this, so we need to do two things. One is going to be to hide the joining surface on these, and the next is going to be to triple click that and sample the texture from the other wedges. You can all toss this in a digital garbage can, hide the axis, and let's throw a tile floor under our bench by drawing a large rectangle going into the tile. And how about a slight floor? Flip the shadows on to get a nice little effect on a stool. And I think we'll call that good. So thanks for tuning into the digital job site to see how this professional carpenter's wood stool is modeled. If you follow the link in the video description, it'll take you to my next level carpentry channel where I'll show you how I build this stool out in the shop. And if you enjoy this content, please feel free to comment and share and spread the word. Thanks for watching.